the homeless coordinator, John Dino, joined us live to detail his plan to fight against the epidemic. The new year brings in a new leader to combat Hawaii's homeless epidemic. Joining us now is newly named homeless coordinator, former state representative John Mizuno. Aloha and good morning, John. It's so strange not to call you Representative Mizuno, but as of the second, right, you're moving into this new position. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And thank you for having me on today. Well, thank you for joining us. So what do you feel like is the biggest hurdle to the state in combating this homeless crisis? Coordination. Coordination. You want the governor, his directors, uh, the legislature, and the community, nonprofits, businesses, to all be coordinated together. We can work together like a team. Uh, that's a very powerful thing. I think we can do some really good things in addressing homelessness. Now, as far as shelters go, uh, Partners in Care Oahu lists a uh, list of vacancies on Oahu as of today, and this is a fluid number, there are 41 vacancies. Uh, shelter number, how, how do you feel like increasing that shelter number will benefit the homeless population here? Um, that would help. That would help. But there's still other things that we need to do. We need to be Akamai at how we house our homeless. Many of our homeless do not want to go to a shelter because of drug addiction, medical condition, or both, or they just don't want rules need to be Akamai and, and get places where they'll go and stay. Uh, at the end of the day, if we do this correctly, it's got a, it's a benefit to the entire society. We reduce crime, reduce recidivism, save taxpayers money. So that's very important that we do this correctly. Um, shelter is not just one small aspect. There's so many other pockets that we have to successfully address and coordinate. So yes, that's an important issue, but there's a lot of other issues that are connected to this uh, unfortunate dilemma that we have in our state. And one thing Governor Green has invested in is the Kauhale, uh, the, the residences. How, how do you feel like those have been working so far? They've been working pretty well. Um, we're hopeful to see some open up this month. We're excited to explain the concept. This is uh, something that Governor Green and I worked on when we were representatives and later on he became a senator. We called them Ohana Zones, where a person can become stable and heal. He or she will have security that will protect them from violence or theft. Uh, providing them transportation to school, a job training or employment, in their doctor's appointments with wraparound services. If we do this correctly, we can really help move the needle on homelessness in our state. According to the National Alliance to End Homelessness, uh, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Island populations are drastically hit by the homeless epidemic. Uh, when you look at rates, it's double any other race across the country. It's just dramatic. I think it's 121 people per, per 10,000. Uh, do you feel like there's something that can be done within this community specifically to help combat homelessness? Absolutely. This is our host culture we're talking about. It's time when the state works with our other agencies, such as um, DHHL. They have money for housing. They need to coordinate better services. Get those people in the houses. The other focus would be probably rental units. Not everyone can buy. And some people aren't even interested in buying a home. But if we target affordable rental units, then those families can get into an affordable rental unit, perhaps save a nest egg, and eventually buy permanent housing. That's their call. But at this point, we need to get um, our Hawaiian brothers and sisters in housing as soon as we can. I think this is an opportunity to work with other departments in the state to coordinate a major effort like that. Housing is so important, but when you look at another aspect, and this is a multifaceted thing, homelessness, uh, you do see severe mental illness as a problem, as well as drug addiction, right? Uh, for those who do suffer from severe mental illness, uh, involuntary commitment is very difficult. Getting those folks help when they don't know they need help is very difficult. Do you feel like there's any strategies that can be used to help those folks? Yes, we have a Kauhale medical model, and some people call it housing first, where hypothetically, I I'll use myself as an example. Say I'm the guy that's duly diagnosed, I've got a mental condition, and a drug addiction, I'm a frequent flyer, meaning I go to the ER every week or every other week, quite possibly costing um, up to a million dollars in, in cost to the hospital and state taxpayers. The way to address a person in my condition would be to have me go to a medical Kauhale, where I'd have 24 seven service, meaning you'd have an intake officer there, you'd have security there to make sure everything is, is on the down low, everything's okay. Then you'd get wraparound services, social and health services. So you have a team for me, you'd have a social worker, you'd have a nurse, you'd have my case manager that knows that I have Medicaid funding for me as well as SNAP monies for me to buy food and what have you. Uh, we'd have transportation. Um, we'd have a doctor that knows certain medications that work, what works, what doesn't. And then with that team, it sounds like a large investment, but it's not. You have a team like that around me and it's, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of people. You're gonna address my di my addiction, you're gonna address my mental health issues. Chances are I won't go to jail or I won't have to go to the state hospital. 
save taxpayers a lot of money, and I'm not going to become a frequent flyer. I'm not going to, you know, continue to go to ER every other week, which costs, again, save taxpayers and hospitals. At the end of the day, it could be a million dollars for one person. Yeah, less of a burden on the system and treating the problem versus the symptoms of that problem. Very right, well. and keep in mind, so you have wraparound services. I'm going to become stable. I'm going to heal. I'm going to go to job training. I'm going to get better. My peer group's going to help me along the way with my doctor, my nurse, social worker, and case manager. And eventually, eventually, I'm going to become self-sufficient. I'm a realist, though. It's not going to work for everyone. We're not going to win. You know, everyone's not going to get a win. But that's the best approach. Yeah, such an important topic. Representative Mizuno, or excuse me, former Representative Mizuno, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, I appreciate you. Best of luck in the future. Thank you. Coming up, Shevlin, we'll have an in